The fun continues with members of the Florida Powerboat Club right here on our YouTube channel. Stu Jones along with producer Ryan McCoy here and the Pompano Beach Man Cave. And we are showcasing a fantastic summer journey, which was eight events, eight states, 8,000 miles. And we are now on episode two with feature coverage of that really cool summer tour uh, featuring the Flight 1130 cigarette sponsored by Mercury Racing. We left off from our last episode, uh, which was the Thousand Islands Poker Run in Clayton, New York. And uh, Jackie and I were headed off to Cape Cod to join members Kurt and Regina Watkins for a fantastic adventure in and around the Cape Cod waters. From there, we traveled south to Maryland for the annual Thunder in the City Poker Run, an event that we've been to before. So before we get started, guys, let's thank our sponsors. Our presenting sponsor for the FPC 2023 series of events is Mercury Racing, celebrating 50 years of wide open. And by these sponsors in alphabetical order, Big Thunder Marine, Blackwater Boats, Cigarette Racing Team, Concept Boats, Deep Impact Custom Boats, Fountain Power Boats, Midnight Express Boats, Nortec High Performance Boats, Performance Boat Center, SD Marine Group, Isla Morada, and by Statement Marine. And this adventure takes us to Cape Cod, uh, where we join Kurt and Regina Watkins uh, at their home. And a couple of great days of boating. It all starts off with having some lobster at the famous Black Cat Tavern in Hyannis. And that was a great way to kick things off. We ended up in Marston Mills, and that is where their beautiful summer home is. They spend several months up here every year, and of course, Kurt Watkins is from this area, grew up in the Massachusetts area, so this is their summer home. And what a beautiful home it is and such a neat area. Uh, a lot of winding roadways through the country and a lot of vegetation and trees. So this is kind of a part of Cape Cod that we've never been to before. So Kurt took some time to kind of cruise us around in the Jeep and give us a, a local tour of the countryside and went out and did some grocery shopping so we could hang out at the pad and really just have a couple of relaxing days here so we could plan a couple of days of boating in the area waters uh, before we headed south down to Maryland for the next poker run. And Kurt has a lot of activity going on at the house because they made the purchase recently and he had a revolving door of maintenance people and uh, just housekeeping, but the garage was really a dream garage for most of us with this Camaro and of course the custom Jeep. A lot of toys here in his garage and uh, look how clean the floors are. All I can say is that there's something about us powerboat guys. We really love our toys. And of course, here's where the real adventure begins. And that is when we get out on their Nortec 390 Sport. It's powered by Quad Mercury Racing 450Rs. A fairly new boat. And it's going to be our platform to get out and cruise Cape Cod. A place we've never been before. Neither Jackie or I. So this was extremely exciting for us. And the weather was perfect for a nice cruise. So here are some sights and sounds of the early stages of our cruise. And this is, uh, the, uh, the temperature dropped about 15, 20 degrees in the last is, few minutes. Cold Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. Because it's, you go out here, it's about to be cold. Yeah. The, the water was choppy back there. We got rid of the chop and it converted it to swells. Of course, this is a, they described this as a white shark buffet. Waiting for them to jump in the water and go feed. So what we've just done is uh, we've worked our way out through the bay waters uh, out into the ocean and around an island that is uh, called Monome Island, which is a national refuge. Local knowledge is critical uh, to be boating in these areas because you have to be mindful of the tides and the currents. And if you're not, you're gonna end up on a sandbar or a big shoal sometime and you'll probably be there all night. Uh, not a place that we wanna be at this time, but uh, having been a local boater here all his life, Kurt was able to find a skinny little uh, passageway into Pleasant Bay. And almost immediately the landscape changed with the beautiful homes along the shoreline, obviously a very upscale area to live. And our destination today was going to be the Wequasset Resort and Golf Club. Uh, again, a very upscale resort, a private resort at that uh, on Little Pleasant Bay. So we anchored the boat out on a mooring ball and we were picked up uh, by a tender boat that came out and got us. There's the boat sitting way out there. 
on an anchoring ball. Ignore those two girls in bikinis. They're not with us. They should be with us, but they're not. Uh, there's the boat sitting out there by itself. But it was a quick visit, a couple snacks, a couple drinks. We're back out on the waterways, and we asked to take a look at the seals one more time. Here we are on Monome Island, a national refuge, and there were hundreds of seals along the beach here. It was an impressive sight. We're going to cut it short on this first day back at the harbor, and there's the boat sitting at a floating dock. It's going to stay in the water overnight because we have more boating adventures planned for the next couple of days. And just a couple of highlights of day two, which was a non-boating day. We hung around Marston Mills and uh, just cruised around the local area that we stopped at this little grocery store uh, where we were able to pick up everything really we needed for the home. We did some uh, cooking at home, but they had some great selections uh, in this little corner store. And it really was like a supermarket, but, you know, Sam Drucker's version, you know, from Green Acres. And that's kind of how it is around these parts. If you want to drive a little further, you can get to some of the big shopping centers and grocery stores but why would you do that when you can hang out and just cruise around this neat little country store order some fresh deli sandwiches and find virtually anything you might need and now day three of our cape cod agenda we find ourselves back at hyannis marina where we have got the nortec 390 fueled and ready to go with the same crew she's called evil woman but i can assure you there's no evil women on this boat they're just here to have fun Today's agenda is a two-stopper, and it's going to begin by going across the bay to Nantucket, which is about a 25-mile ride, maybe 22 miles, I can't remember, but important to stock up the Nortec, and that's exactly what we were doing here at Hyannis Marina with this cute little ship store at the fuel dock. And just looking around, you can see quite a variety of boats here. Remember that they have a dry storage and a forklift and a boat ramp, but a lot of these bigger boats are just staying uh, in the water at these floating docks, and they stay here throughout the season. Uh, looking around at the shoreline, you see a lot of these classic old New England style or Cape Cod style buildings, and they're all one color, and that is gray. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but that's just the landscape here in Cape Cod. Everything has a very similar look with the cedar shingle roofs and the gray siding. Uh, so that's the look you're going to get. Uh, you know, some colors change from here to there, a little bit of green, a little bit of brown, but uh, ultimately very similar looking landscape throughout the area uh, from what I could see. So what we are doing today is actually a very popular route, uh, not only for recreational boaters from the area, but really for the big ferry boats. So people constantly going back and forth across these bay waters to and from not only Nantucket but also Martha's Vineyard and we've got our same fun crew on board today everybody's uh, anxious to get back over to Nantucket and here's the uh, viewpoint of one of these big ferries uh, that continuously transits the harbor back and forth and they call right there in Hyannis every day and it was about a 30 minute ride across the harbor to Nantucket you can see that the weather held out for us uh, was a little chilly uh, but it is uh, midsummer right now, so if it's going to be warm, now's the time it's going to be warm. And this is our first view of the lighthouse coming into Nantucket. Uh, and we've got to enter carefully because it's a very, very busy little harbor. A lot of activity and a lot of really big boats in every direction. Of course, this is the uh, number one most popular destination for these yachts all summer long. Probably one of the most expensive harbors in the northeastern seaboard. And I'm told by Kurt that there's a very long waiting list to have a long-term or full-time slip here at this harbor. And as we approached the harbor, Kurt told me to look over to my left and uh, to look for a big Merritt sport fishing yacht. And there she is. That is the Christina, which is an 88-foot Merritt uh, built right in Pompano Beach, right near where we live. And it is owned by Kurt's father, Mr. Watkins, was actually on board today. And he welcomed us on board later in the day. And what a beautiful classic merit this is. And I could hang out here all day long because obviously a boat and yacht lover uh, would really get carried away here. The, the quality of the vessels in this marina is just outstanding, uh, especially some of these classic sport fishing vessels like these two. Just uh, unbelievable. They're one after another. Just when you think you saw the best yacht of all time, well, go around the corner, there's another one just like it. <laughs> and of course, you don't arrive here without a reservation. And today our stopover was only going to be for a couple of hours, but Kurt had uh, to call ahead and was able to get through to the dockmaster and picked up one slip that we're going to be able to use for a couple of hours. And 
I think he told me he paid a few hundred bucks for it, so that's pretty incredible. Right alongside this big 65-foot HCB Australia, it turns out it's the first one, and many of us have seen those big 65s. This one was powered by seven Marines. Got on board Dad's Merit as well. We came to say hi, and uh, he allowed us to tour around. I'm up on the bridge now of that 88-foot Merit built in Pompano Beach, a custom Merit that is really a standalone boat in terms of its beauty and its quality and its craftsmanship. But of course, the ladies wanted to go and do a little shopping and check out all of the boutiques. So it was time to walk around in the village and it was really an eye-opening sight. Uh, first of all, we found a super cool place to have lunch. And of course, I went to my traditional dish, which was lobster. And I believe I had some clam chowder to kick things off. I think I had that at every meal, every lunch and every dinner for the entire stay. And what's wrong with that? You know, if you're going to be in New England, if you're going to be in Cape Cod, you might as well enjoy the local catch because you're not going to get it anywhere else in the country as fresh as that. And with all of these visuals, you can pretty much get a feeling of what it's like to visit Nantucket in the middle of summer. And it is also very historic. Remember that most of these streets are original from back several hundred years. And even though some of the buildings have been replaced or maybe fixed up, you get the feeling that you're walking through, you know, a circa 1700 or 1800 waterfront village. And that's really the cool thing about it. Even this rail car, which is uh, now known as the club car restaurant, has a lot of history to be told. So I'm just going to let you guys enjoy the sights and sounds of Nantucket before we get back out on the water. Well, obviously, there are a lot of ways for you to spend your money here in Nantucket, and uh, this is only scratching the surface of all the cool little boutiques and shops that there are uh, because they have things that you would never find anywhere and right here in Nantucket. We went to so many cool shops, and, I mean, if you had several thousand dollars to burn, <laughs> you could do it right in this shop alone, trust me. Uh, the Boat Harbor was very impressive. It's actually built in about 1930 so here we are in a town that's about 400 years old which we're now accessing with a marina that's yet to celebrate its 100th birthday well we're getting ready to get back out on the water now in this uh, nortec 390 those quad mercury racing 450 r's are all fired up and uh, everyone is ready for a ride now remember we've been out on the water earlier from hyannis across nantucket sound to the port of nantucket uh, and now we're just going to work our way back out of this beautiful marina. And we've got a short uh, run now to get over to Martha's Vineyard. Running back through Nantucket Sound, I think it was about a 20-mile ride on a northwestern heading as we pulled into Edgartown Harbor and, of course, Martha's Vineyard uh, right there on our doorstep. We're not going to get very far, though, today because we're just going to stop in and uh, stay at the Yacht Club for dinner. That's the Edgartown Yacht Club. And this is the scene you're going to get, guys, these sailboats uh, cruising around in the harbor. Uh, this is kind of like a standard, just another day of the life here of people who hang out at Martha's Vineyard. And you don't have to be a yachting expert to notice that some of these sailing yachts are truly magnificent and just a different backdrop here than we're used to seeing down in South Florida. Of course, a lot of mooring balls, hard to get in and to tie up at a dock or a marina here. 
the uh, tying up at a mooring ball is a way of life, and it was going to be for us too, as we arrive now here at Edgar Town Yacht Club. And our guests on the board are actually members here at Edgar Town, so we're going to be able to enjoy dinner at this very exclusive restaurant, uh, dropping the crowd off here on the floating dock. But then we've got to take the boat and put it back on a mooring ball. But that's not a problem because that's the way they do things around here. And a little uh, taxi boat comes out to get us almost immediately. I happened to catch this shot of these guys out sailing this old classic racing yacht well it kind of looks like a racing yacht to me but whether it's a sloop or a schooner whatever you want to call it that is a beautiful sailboat and a very able captain out for a scenic cruise here in the early evening Now here's a great shot where you see all these little tenders, these dinghies that are coming in off of these yachts that are out on mooring balls. And again, it's just a way of life here, you know, not something uh, that we're very accustomed to, but that's how they roll here in Edgar Town Harbor. And there's the Nortec on a mooring ball. And to the left there, you can see the water taxi. That's our ride to get back and forth uh, from the boat over here to the restaurant. So that completes our day on the water. We continued back to Hyannis uh, later in the day, but thank you to Kurt and Regina Watkins for hosting us here in Cape Cod and showing us the uh, area attractions here at Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. And fast forward just another two days, really, where we find ourselves in Northeast Maryland. We rendezvoused with our driver from Palmetto Yacht Management and uh, drove the truck and trailer over to Anchor Marina in Northeast Maryland, where a lot of other uh, power boaters were getting ready for this uh, Thunder in the City Poker Run event, an annual event we've been to before. We stopped by Sean Hagen's house, which is right across the street from Anchor Marina, and we got to see his cool collection of toys and that massive jet dock where he's got his Hustler, his 39 Hustler, uh, loaded up and a cool boat a one-off boat by the way this hustler uh, some of you guys might have remember seeing it at the miami boat show about uh, six or seven years ago but he now owns it and this is his backyard and what a cool little boater's paradise this is you make your own videos and don't talk in them i like talking in my videos so i remember what's happening here so we took a nice ride along the northeast river which turned uh, around to the left at turkey point and into the elk river that's john wittenberger and natalie joining us there in the 36 foot specter uh, he was a big help uh, to us getting ready for this event and of course this is really in his backyard he's from new jersey just a little bit to the northeast of this venue so he tends to do this event every year so it is the 19th year now for this event at chesapeake city and uh, of course we just saw the landmark chesapeake city bridge and now we're coming into the chesapeake inn which is going to be our headquarter for the event and what i love about this venue is that all of the boats well maybe not all of them but a lot of them are going to be docked here overnight and they have just a lot of little cool bed and breakfasts and um, you know a lot of VRBOs and some Airbnbs that are close by so you can stay in in these Airbnbs or bed and breakfast places walking distance from the Chesapeake Inn and if you don't get a chance to stay here well you're gonna be 10 miles down the road at the nearest town that has hotels so if you're gonna do this event I would highly recommend you get signed up early enough uh, so you can stay close by because really everything happens right here every evening So here is that cool little bed and breakfast. We stayed at it was two blocks away from the Chesapeake Inn called the Blue Max Inn and I was very lucky because uh, Somebody had a cancellation and we were able to get their room and almost everybody that was staying at this inn were involved uh, In the poker run event for the weekend. So it was kind of fun and a great location 
It was nice to be back here at the Chesapeake Inn uh, and Four Victors Thunder in the City Poker Run. We actually attended in 2016 with our 33-foot Ocean Hawk Center console. So it was nice to be back here with the cigarette amongst all these high-performance machines. The dock just came alive with big horsepower as we prepared for the run. And it was uh, nice to have another cigarette tied up alongside us. I've got uh, Jackie Jones, my first mate today, as we get ready to untie the boat and head on on this beautiful day today here on the Chesapeake. We're going to be hitting about four checkpoints uh, for today's run. And it was nice to see some of our fellow club members here, starting with Michael Tandoy and his crew team out of control. Uh, 40 skater that came all the way down from Rochester, New York to attend. Uh, so yeah, this was just one of many. We really felt at home here. thought it was like almost an FPC event because remember that this is a strong base of memberships here in the Northeast from Maryland to Pennsylvania, of course, New Jersey and New York. Uh, we have a ton of club members up this way and a lot of them were here attending the Thunder in the City event. And it was nice to see John Wittenberger Sr. and his wife Tracy on their uh, new Sensation, a 29 model with a pair of Mercury Racing 350s. So they're a long ways from home right now because they moved from New Jersey down to North Carolina and that's where the boat stays. And what a beautiful day it is. A little time to cruise around. Uh, that's another bed and breakfast over on the right with a little restaurant. That gray building in the center is actually a small one bedroom cabin that you can rent. And I had rented that for Jackie and I, and then we decided to give it up when we were able to get into the Blue Max Inn. But if anybody wanted, it's a cool place. That one was uh, looked really, really like a great spot. Uh, and then this is really just a public dock. A lot of people hang out here and watch all the boats go by. And this certainly was a spectator gallery for a little later when the poker run got going. Uh, it's still a little early right now. The boats haven't left the dock. There's Zach Polsky with his 50-foot MTI. Uh, so he's all raring to go. He sold the Midnight Express and seems to be enjoying this big 50 MTI. He keeps it on a boat lift just a couple of miles up the river. And there's Craig and Paula Ackerman in their 39-foot MTI. They came up from Georgia to join us. Uh, but as we're just milling around for the start, let's talk about today's run. Five checkpoints all together. Chesapeake Inn, of course, the very first card stop in the morning, followed by Still Pond, which is a cruiser that's anchored out in a bay. Tiki Lee's Dock Bar and Pool Deck is going to be our lunch stop. We'll be there for a couple of hours, followed by uh, Tolchester Marina, which is just a card pickup uh, from a boat. And then away we go to Jellyfish Joel's Dock Bar. Uh, from 2 o'clock on, uh, it's a dock party. We're going to get our final card there, and that will terminate the poker run. And I'm kind of having flashbacks uh, to the early years of FPC when I look at this 93 Top Gun. Uh, I believe this boat might have done some poker runs with us in the Miami area way back 30 years earlier. Nice to see this old school Top Gun still out on the poker run circuit. So we got up and ran for about 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes, and then we arrived on this checkpoint, uh, which is number two. And you gotta love these floating checkpoints. I've always loved where 
a crew gets together on a big boat and uh, goes on an anchor, and they really just have a big party afloat so that the poker run boats can come up one by one. And here they've got a fantastic uh, Playboy theme. Uh, the guys and the girls, look, at they got about 20 people on board uh, doing a great job of uh, that long pole, get the cards that distributed to every boat as they come along. Everybody's got the cool costumes. What a great looking, enthusiastic team. This is one of the reasons why we just love doing poker runs. And of course, the other reason why we love poker runs so much. <laughs> there you got it, guys. Is Sean Higgins doing a belly flop at Tiki Lee's? Well, we had fantastic hospitality at Tiki Lee's, and thanks to David Carey for actually serving us himself. The food was fantastic. Everybody had a great time. Here's the scene out on the docks. A lot of people enjoying uh, the waterfront setting here. And uh, we checked out David Carey's newest boat. He's enjoying this new Sportsman 352 model center console. It's powered by triple Mercury V10 400s. But it looks like the boat is staying on the lift today. For David, it's all work and no play on the poker run. So thanks to Tiki Lee's for a great lunch stopover. Now we're back out on the waterways for two more checkpoints this afternoon. One of them is going to be a rendezvous with another boat. I don't think we got that one on camera. Uh, but then the final checkpoint was at Jellyfish Joel's Dock Bar, a very popular hangout here on these waterways. There was a really long channel uh, to idle in to the dock bar, but everyone was really chill and relaxed. And uh, I, I can't remember having any incidents whatsoever on this poker run just everyone was very respectful and uh, we really enjoyed riding around on these waterways and it's a good thing everyone was behaved because I don't think you're gonna pack two boats in through this little opening uh, here uh, getting into this protected harbor where jellyfish Joel's is and a lot of people out enjoying the afternoon with, with all kinds of boats and obviously this is a big spectator event for all the locals to see the poker run coming in here. So everyone was out uh, with their cameras and checking out all the cool boats as they arrived. And finally, we got settled in here at Jellyfish Joel's Dock Bar and you can see a lot of people already lined up and the party is about to begin. And I think I have a better understanding now of why Victor and why the organizers have decided to say, well, this is the last checkpoint and it is the end or the termination of the poker run. Well, of course, it's obvious why, because this is one big bash. And of course, uh, all of the captains and the crews were very creative in their uh, docking and tie-up skills because I think we had the boats rafted about 15 or maybe 20 deep off of one dock. And that's pretty much the way you gotta do things around here, guys, because the docks aren't very big, but it doesn't bother this gang. Uh, they don't mind hopping boat to boat, and hey, what a great way to make some new boating friends. Well, you can see, guys, how it'd be quite easy to just uh, sit down on the dock with a beer and a camera and enjoy the rest of the entertainment. Uh, but we've got to keep things moving. There's Victor, our organizer, uh, riding with Tom Gorzis on OPA, that big 42-foot cigarette. And I think we're just going to join in and follow them back to the Chesapeake Inn and get ready for the big party tonight. Uh, but what a wonderful day on the water with all of our fellow participants on the Thunder in the City Poker Run. But we all have to remember one thing, guys. You gotta pace yourself on these poker runs because remember, one party leads right into the next. And that's exactly what we did from this afternoon party here to the evening party, which was the Poker Run Awards party at the Chesapeake Inn. And here we are wrapping up things here with a festive evening with great food and great entertainment. Thanks to Victor DeMarco and all of his crew for throwing a great event here in Chesapeake City, Maryland. Well, guys, we're just approaching the 30-minute mark, and that wraps up two more poker runs on our summer poker run tour here 2023. We still have three more events ahead, including the Borden Light Poker Run in Fall River, Massachusetts, 
followed by the Lake Cumberland Poker Run in Kentucky. And we did return to the Pirates of Lanier Poker Run in Georgia. It's all going to be right here on the Florida Powerboat Club YouTube channel in our next episode with feature coverage of this 2023 summer tour. Guys, you can't afford to miss another show, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and make sure you click that notification bell so you'll get an update every time a new episode is released. Be sure to check out the website at flpowerboat.com for all of the details about upcoming Poker Run events as well as membership information. You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club and you can follow us on Twitter and on these Instagram pages. Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for your wonderful comments on our page and you guys know who you are and I really do appreciate that. But if you have questions or comments you want to direct to me specifically, please use my personal email at stu at flpowerboat.com. I check that daily and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We're going to sign off for now. This is Stu Jones along with our producer Ryan McCoy in the Pompano Beach studio. Have fun out there, guys. Be safe on the waterways. Wear your life jackets when the time is right and always respect your fellow boaters. Bye for now.